Hey, it's Irreverent Aegis here, and in this video, I'm going to show you a brand new build, but this time, I'm going to show you it in action before I go over how it works. So, sometime between now and 21 seconds from now, you're going to see why I call this build the Atomic Aegis. This is the Hagraven boss, the second boss in veteran Bloodroot Forge, and we're going to kill her so fast that you would think that we were doing this on normal. So she puts up her garden, a couple things come out, and before you know it, she's pretty much dead. 21 seconds. Alright, alright. I know what you might be thinking. That boss only has 3 million health, of course you can burst her down that fast. What if you take on something a little bit beefier, like the Earthgore Amalgam, hard mode, in Bloodroot Forge? Well, watch and learn. Up until this point in the fight, nothing special. Just a tank and three DPS, pushing a phase to get the second Atra to spawn. Now, the boss is gonna go invulnerable. And then after he stops being invulnerable, something special is gonna happen. So here we go. He's summoning his third Atro. I'm gonna pick it up, I'm gonna drop my ultimate. Everyone else in the group drops their ultimates, and we're going to laugh as we watch everything burn. The only thing that prevented this from going faster is, of course, this guy also goes invulnerable, so we have to wait for this to end before we can finish the fight. The total time that it's going to take for us to finish this fight from first taunt till the death, 1 minute 23 seconds. Let's take a look at a couple of Depths of Malatar bosses. Here we have the Weeping Woman, and what we have to do here is we have to wait for some mechanics to go through. We're going to get some Ice Atros, we're going to get some Stone Watchers. How do we deal with that? Well, first we're going to wait for that AoE to go away in the middle. Then we're all going to group up in the center. I'm going to pick up this Stone Watcher, and then we're all going to drop the Atom Bomb. Total elapsed time from first taunt to finish, 33 seconds. Now I'm going to show you some footage from one of the most hated bosses in the game, King Merylmore. Now, I am a little disappointed in this video, because a couple bad things happened. One, one of our people dropped his ultimate in the ad poll beforehand, so that's going to slow us down. And two, we're going to get a lot of different ice spikes blocking access to the boss. So this fight is going to take way longer than it should have, but still, it's going to go pretty quick. What you're going to notice here is that we're all going to go to this corner right away. How do we know this was the correct corner before King Naramore even appeared? We didn't mark him with Ellie Drain or anything like that. What we did is, we had our Templar hit him with the Jesus Beam right at the beginning of his teleport. And, because he hit him with that Jesus Beam, the Jesus Beam actually will follow him to whatever corner before he visually appears, so we instantly knew which corner he was going to be in. All I did as the tank was make sure I taunted everything else so their light attacks were directed at me, but I'm not going to group him or do anything like that, because all we did was ulti dump this guy in the corner, and we watched him burn. Total elapsed time for King Narrowmore, 50 seconds. Now, Vet Moon Hunter Keep has to be my favorite place to highlight this build, because of the sheer quickness at which we burn everything down. So normally, Jailer Melitis at 30% is going to stun me, and I can't break free, someone has to get a bash. The thing is, though, he's going to do this mechanic here, and we're going to push him, while he's doing this mechanic, all the way to zero. He'll never even get that off. So, total time, 19 seconds. Next up, we have the big werewolf boss, Mylin Mooncaller. Mylin gets enraged by the shock words that comes up, and when she gets enraged, it drastically reduces the amount of damage that she takes. But, it doesn't really matter, because we're still gonna kill her really quickly anyway. So we drop all our ultimates, our DPS dance around to avoid all the lightning that comes up, and as you can see, this fight is not gonna last very long. Total elapsed time for Mylin Mooncaller, 22 seconds. I just have two more bosses to show you before I get into the nuts and bolts of this build. 
Here we have Archivist Ernard, the second to last boss in Moonhunter Keep. Pretty much all I do is poke him, drop my ultimate, and then stand over here to make sure this breath doesn't hit my droop. And by the time I finish this sentence, he's pretty much going to be dead. Total elapsed time, 17 seconds. Last up, I'm going to show you the execute phase of hard mode on Vicosa. This one's great because we're actually going to skip every single mechanic that happens in this execute. So I only include the footage before we get to the execute, so I have time to explain what's going on. So once she gets to 30%, she comes off the top area, we spawn some ads, we spawn the other boss that is going to do the shapes mechanic, and then at 25% we get more ads, and then at 20% we get more ads and everything comes off their leash, and all hell breaks loose. So pretty much we're going to avoid most of that, because what we're going to do is we're going to push her to 32%, we're going to drop all our ultimates, and right after that, 8 seconds later, she is going to be dead. 2 million damage, 8 seconds. Of course, Command Dork got triple clapped by lightning and died with 1 second to go, ruining the pure lunacy run, but we already got it, so so did she. So not that big of a deal. So hopefully you've seen enough footage now to say, hey, I want to try that build. What is it? Well, as you saw, it's designed for incredibly high burst damage. And you may be thinking, okay, but maybe you just have really good DPS in your group. And I'm not going to lie, the DPS in my group are good, but none of them are hitting 100k by any means. One of them, you'd be shocked to know, only hits about 80k. The other, mid to high 80s, and the other, just over 90. So again, we're a great group, but we're not top tier. None of us are hitting over 100k. So, there's a reason why I call this the Atomic Aegis, and it's because you can just blow everything up really fast. Let's take a look. The first thing I'm going to show you is that I'm wearing the Master's Perfected Dagger and Shield, which has nothing to do with the Atomic part of this build. It just makes it easier on me to tank while I don't have a healer in the group. So, I do have Decisive, which helps me build Ultimate faster, and I do have the Fire Enchant, to proc in Karate so we can do more flame damage as well. But other than that, this is just the selfish part of the build that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with why this build is so effective. So if you're not familiar with the Master's Sword and Shield, it's basically I get a big heal whenever I poke something and I get extra physical and spell resistance. So let's move on to what we actually care about, which is the rest of the build. On my back bar, I have a War Machine Ice Staff. It's infused with a Crusher enchant, but as I'll explain later, I should probably change that to Charged with a Frost enchant so I can keep up Brittle. War Machine. When you use an ultimate ability in combat, you give your closest five group members and yourself Major Slayer for a second for every ten ultimates spent, increasing your damage done to Dungeon Trial and Arena Monsters by 10%. So in other words, if I have a fully charged ultimate, I'm going to be giving everybody 50 seconds of Major Slayer, which as you saw is pretty much more than enough time to get the job done for whatever we are looking for. For my Monster Helm, I have Incrati's Behemoth. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to increase the flame damage of the group by 5%, so again, it adds to that extra damage dealing that the group is going to do when we all decide to drop our ultimates. That's why I run a flame enchant on my front bar, so that way I can proc this. For my second five-piece set, I run Sack Seals. And of course, Sack Seals is when you use an ultimate ability, you give everyone in your group a major force for one second for every 15 ultimates spent, increasing your critical damage done by 20%. In other words, with a fully charged 500 ultimate, I'm giving everybody 36 seconds of major force. To be honest, my skills are pretty much just standard tanking skills. I have a flex spot on both my front and my back bar. On the front bar, I have Heroic Slash, sometimes slotted, other times I have a crowd control. Really, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be saving ultimate between boss fights anyway, and I'm pretty much going to have a 500 built up most of the time where Heroic Slash won't be necessary. My front bar ultimate is flexible, but normally I put on Temporal Guard for the 100% uptime on Minor Protection. The reason why I don't run a Colossus on the front bar is because I have it back barred in order to proc Major Slayer. And I don't put it on the front bar because I don't accidentally want to cast it when I'm on the wrong bar. So as long as it's not Colossus, I'm good. That's why it's a flexible position. On the back bar, I run Necrotic Potency for extra ultimate generation if needed, otherwise it's a flex spot. And I run Wall of Elements, of course, to proc the enchant. Like I said, I'll probably change that to Charged and a Frost enchant for Brittle. 
Of course, I also run Glacial Colossus. That's going to give a major vulnerability. I switched my back bar, drop the ultimate. I'm going to give major vulnerability, major slayer, and major force all at the same time. Whenever I'm in group, I say drop in Super Colossus because I'm kind of a nerd. So that's what we do when we want to blow everything up. I drop this Super Colossus, we get all those buffs, and we nuke everything down. Now, that's all you can control on yourself, but if you have a dedicated four-man group looking to do cool stuff, we can spice things up by having all the DPS run Baylorgs. When you use an ultimate ability, you gain weapon and spell damage equal to the amount of total ultimate consumed, and physical and spell penetration equal to 23 times the amount for 12 seconds. So if everyone drops that fully charged 500 ultimate, not only do they get that spell damage, but they get that extra physical and spell penetration, that's why, if you remember earlier, I said I do not need to be running an Infused Crusher enchant, and why I should go with a Brittle build running a Frost enchant and Charged. Because that Baylord ultimate is going to more than put you over cap, even without the Crusher enchant. So I'd rather get that extra damage from Brittle. Now, of course, you want to run with whatever group you have, but if you really want to make things really interesting, make sure you have a variety of classes in your group. For example, in the runs that you saw, we do have a Zen's DK, who's not only applying Zen's, but is applying the Engulfing Flames 10% flame damage buff. We also have a Magplar, and we have a Magblade. So we have the ridiculous execute from the Magplar and the Magblade to go on top of everything we've talked about, plus all that extra damage that we're getting from Zen's and Engulfing Flames. This is why we can nuke things down so quickly. I want to finish off this video by going through the best DLC dungeon hard modes to run this build. Obviously first we have Moon Hunter Keep, and you saw plenty of footage there. The only place the nuke strategy didn't work great was the Maze Boss. However, we were able to get it down to 15% before it regenerated back up. I am curious to see if I run that Brittle build, if we can get it from 100% to 0% without it actually regenerating, so that would be something cool to try. Let's talk about Fang Lair hard mode, in particular the No Bone Left Unbroken achievement, doing the hard mode, the speedrun, and the no death all in one. Wouldn't it be nice if you were able to nuke down the boss when he regenerates from 0% to 50% before a single wall even came up that you had to dodge? Well, with this build, you absolutely can do that. So enjoy. Depths of Malatar, a very Fanglair-esque hard mode. You get the boss to 10%, you get teleported to another dimension, boss regenerates up to 50%. You run in, you drop all your ultimates, you nuke him down, hopefully enough where you barely have to dodge any walls or do very many mechanics at all. If you saw the footage from the Bloodroot Forge hard mode earlier in this video, you'll know that this build works incredibly well there, no further explanation needed. Last but not least, we have Black Drake Villa, and after doing the first side boss, I would bet that for the first hard mode, everyone can drop their ultimates, and then you can go through the transformation rotation and freeze the boss four times successively and burn him from 100% to 0% without having to worry about a single other mechanic. If you've watched my How to Tank Black Drake Villa hard mode video, then you know that the final hard mode is a joke already. This is going to make it even more of a joke, as you're going to burn that final boss down even faster. So there you have it, there is the entire build and my recommendations for where it is going to work best in 4-man content. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a comment, hit the like button, and of course, if you want more builds like this or more content on tanking, feel free to hit the subscribe button.